Welcome to the next video, Volatility Assessment. Now, before we get into this, I really want to emphasize the principle of knowing your enemy, Sun Tzu, the art of war. If you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of 100 battles. If you know yourself but not the enemy, for every victory gained, you will also suffer a defeat. If you know neither the enemy nor yourself, you will succumb in every battle. This is super important because if you understand what the market's worst case scenario is over 100 battles, you don't need to care about what the result will be because you're prepared for it. And if that's assuming that you also know yourself, like knowing like what ticks you off in a trade, like what triggers all these KPIs that we just talked about, like becoming aware of these things, assuming that you know these things, you don't have to fear the result of 100 battles because your war plan is pretty much set. Like you did your preparation, you put in the hard work, and you persisted through, and more than likely you'll come out victorious. Or if defeat, then it's something they can grow and learn from. Now, if you know yourself but not the enemy, for every victory gained, you will also suffer a defeat. So you may understand your KPIs really well, but you may not know the enemy that well. So what happens is for every victory gained, you will also suffer a defeat. This may be, maybe you didn't understand the worst case scenario in the market, or maybe you missed a little nuance with the setup. Maybe you missed some key volume indicator. Maybe you missed some key news release. Whatever it was, you, you missed something, and for that reason, you suffered a defeat on that day or over 100 battles. Well, you know, that's okay because that's more information to help you grow. Okay? So. If you know neither the enemy nor yourself, you will come in every battle. This is just coming in, thinking you well, it's going to be easy, not really putting in any work, no preparation, and it's just like pulling the lever on a slot machine. It's like let's see what happens because you don't know what anything about the market today. You don't know. You don't have a plan. You don't have a plan. You don't know how you're feeling. Whatever it is, if you don't know that, then. It's just you might have a lucky windfall, but the chances are you, your odds of success are very, very low if you don't know the enemy nor yourself. So you must study your enemy and know what he or she is capable of. This starts with preparation, and what matters is you get a sense of what you and your enemy is capable of doing. What you can expect from what can you expect from market participants' past price behavior? What prices were they aggressive? What prices were they passive? When did the market move sideways? When did the market move aggressively? When were there price rejections? Well, to help overcome fear and hope, let's get a sense of what this chart is capable of by breaking it down into its smallest components. I'll start with the basic six-step checklist for some things I want to prepare before trading this chart. Now, this is, I cut this preparation down a little bit. I really just wanted to focus on the metrics that revolve around eliminating fear and hope and giving you more confidence in trades. And to me, that starts with the volatility assessment. So the first thing I like to get an idea of is, number one, what's the average daily range for the instrument that we're trading? This is important because the average daily range gives us an idea for what the market is offering us in terms of risk and reward potential. So let's take a look at SPY. This is from this is the volatility for this week the, from, uh, let's see, looks like, uh, October 10th to the 14th or so. Well, the 20 day average daily range on SPY is about $5.03, meaning that between the high and low, uh, wherever it moved, the average range on the day was about $5.03 over the last 20 days. It's a month worth of trading. For the last 10 days, like the last two weeks, the average has been about $5.62. And for the last five days, the last week of trading, it's been six dollars and twelve cents, and yesterday it's been six dollars and eleven cents, and today it traded six dollars and fifty-seven cents. So we're clearly in an elevated volatility environment. The market is very volatile. So what this information tells me is, hey, like on average, the market went from the previous month it was like two to three dollars. 
the spy would move, maybe four was an extreme. Now we're nearly 1.5 to 2x that. So what this tells me is I really have to be cautious if I wanna play size right away. So immediately right off the bat, like if, if I'm normally playing a thousand shares on this, this may give me a heads up to say, hey, widen up your stops, trade 500 shares, just get an idea for the range. And this range, uh, the range will size me up a little bit because because since the market's moving more, that'll naturally, like I could play wider stops and I could have wider tight profit targets in this example, okay? And if I notice the market's trending, which we'll get into here soon, I could start in small and just slowly scale in with the trend, uh, knowing that I have volatility on my side. So let's line this up on the chart. And the first thing we'll study is downtrends, okay? so. In this case, we're just studying what the market's capable of, not necessarily making a trade. We're just, we want to understand what is the market capable of doing? Well, on October 10th, the market, after it had an uptrend day, it went into, looks like it traded, oh, let's see, so we're all, so it pretty much traded like five or six bucks into the 50 day exponential moving average. And this blue line up here, this is one of those ADRs. I'm not exactly sure which ADR it is, but that blue line is showing that the SPY had just traded. It's like it hit one of its full ranges on the day into that level. Market starts to stall out there. So this is telling me that after the market traded its average daily range for one of the days, it started to pull back. And this downtrend after, after this pullback happened, the market remained sideways. Like th this price action right here, this is sideways action. Then you get aggressive selling to the downside, more, uh, more sideways action, and this downtrend lasted for about three and a half hours, and it was a total of a negative $2.82. So what information is this telling me? Well, as a trader, knowing that the market has just traded near its ADR on the day, that entering a trade, this might just put me a little bit at ease. Like instead, like if in terms of getting blown out of the trade, well, we just traded the average daily range. Worst case scenario, maybe we blow out and, and go up another two two dollars a share. But uh, in terms of this, this is giving me an idea. Hey, the market may uh, be into a slowdown zone over here for a little bit. So if I was going to enter into a short, I wanted to trade a rejection of this level, then look for sideways action and just be aware that it did trade its ADR and. To me, this is this puts me at ease to enter a trade. You get the pullback. It starts a trade uh, off the five minute 20 EMA, goes under VWAP, and the rest of the day just kind of goes sideways and a lot of rejections. The next day, market, you can see it pushes up into here and it rejects off that level again. In this case, uh, this is another price rejection. Market starts to fail and then comes into VWAP, fails again. And this downtrend lasts about four hours and 15 minutes, and it did a fade of about $3.10. Broke below that low, came down here, and after it took out this low, it went to retest these highs up here. And the next day, well, the next day, it after it, it moved sideways for about, is that, it looks like about three hours or so, it moved sideways, and after really look left here in terms of this chart looking left it held monday's high as resistance at 437 so this 437 level got rejected again and as soon as it got rejected market participants started aggressively selling to the downside so you go sideways come up rejection and aggressive selling to the downside this this selling was so aggressive it lasted one hour and uh, 50 minutes and it moved, it moved six dollars. Like it went down six dollars in, in literally like two hours. So, in terms of studying our enemy, we know that if the price starts rejecting this level like that, well, number one, the, the first rejection that I did over here, like after like the, the lower high over here, well, this rejection, the market faded three points, three 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 dollars and ten cents, and then the third rejection over here, maybe you can even call it a fourth rejection because this sold off a little bit, but. This rejection over here, this was decision time for market participants, and it faded another six dollars and ten cents just to the downside. And then you could see down here after it fades at six dollars, that's about that twenty day to ten day range. You could see it comes into the ten day range down here, and it just this is giving us an idea like, hey, if we're short here, 
you may just want to pay attention. You can even see that you could even see like a little reaction here at this at this one day range where the volatility for the day, like there was a little hammer, but uh, market participants rejected this level and they agreed to just get more aggressive to the downside. They sold it down to the 20. So we're still aggressive and then we come down into the, the five and 10 day ranges. And 431, this was also a, a big level on the daily market reverses from here after trading its 10 day, five and 10 day average daily range of six points. It comes down here and then you get a nice reversal. So in terms of me, like in terms of like looking to trade this, at least planning out what the volatility might be, this can just put me at ease in terms of fear. Uh, I won't be like, I won't be, if I'm short this, I'm not gonna be hopeful that we just blow through this. I'm gonna have a sense of objectivity saying, hey, like, just be aware, Ryan, like the market just moved down uh, six points and that's on average for the last two weeks. That's That's been its, its two week range. So especially coming into a key level like 431, then you might wanna be uh, cautious and look to take some off, take some risk off. and. Things like that. Or if I was going to play a reversal on this, then you know this is some information I can use to be less fearful in terms of taking a loss. Because probability is, you know, maybe maybe uh, this trade might work. Who knows? The next day, market comes into the this level again. Very rare V bottom here, or at least attempted to V bottom. This is like the fifth rejection here. Uh, market comes into this 50 EMA. And it just rejects again another five points. You can see the market has a two hour and 15 minute sell off. Comes into that 20 day, that, that this was that uh, the 20 day range for about the month. Uh, and it also comes back into the previous low over here. And you could see some buyers emerge. And after they reject this price and they get aggressive to the downside, they decide to hold this level, push it up for a bounce attempt, and then. Sellers reemerge. They get re they get more aggressive to the downside. Everyone who bought this and bought this, they get stopped out, and we are able to push down to the five uh, day range, and uh, the market continued to move down an additional. I mean that, that moved down three points. It looks like 431 down to 439. So it looks like that from this total move down, it was a total of about seven points, in terms of that maybe six and a half to seven points. That's what it did on that day, and then the market reverses and moves sideways, and that's where the market closed. So I uh, closed pretty much right on its 20 day, 10 day volatility uh, or the uh, range projection. So uh, this is just knowing my enemy, knowing what they're capable of. So I know if a price, if the price is rejected near here, this market's telling me like, hey, the, the reaction may be six points and maybe three points, maybe two points. So as soon as I enter this, I'm, if I'm entering a short, I more than likely will not want to just pike it out for 50 cents or a dollar. I may want to look bigger picture for like at least at least three points, at least two two point five to three points. I, I at least want to try to capture some of this range. This is giving me an idea of of what to expect. And we'll get into risk here in a second. That's that's in terms of like the moves. And also if you're looking to play uh, a long on this, just be aware. You know, if this trade doesn't work, if you're long on this, if you're long this breakout, this is also a good idea to say, hey, like if this price rejects here, well, the last time it rejected, it went down three points, it went down three points, and it went down six points. If if you're trying to long into any of these rejections, just be very aware of what what the mar of what your enemy is capable of doing. Now let's study bounces. Now this is after the market downtrends, after it downtrends. Well, after it moved down about three dollars and ten cents, you can see the market bounces. This day, it bounced three three point one two points, and that bounce lasted for about two hours. The next day, after this full ADR move down into the key support level, the market bounced within an, in about ninety minutes. It bounced another three points, so that that bounced about fifty percent of the range of that six points. And the next bounce, this bounced. So this moved down. This day over here moved down about five points. It bounced up two dollars and twenty cents, about forty to fifty percent of the range. It bounced, lasts about thirty minutes, very quick. It came down, hard sell off, and then the last bounce that I have here, this bar, uh, this this bounce lasts about ninety minutes, moved up about two dollars and fifty two cents. Okay, so see, see like a trend here. It's just like as you're doing this, just see how like just as we're just mapping out like. 
the past week's trend, even you can even do the past month's trend, whatever it is, you're starting to know like what you just get kind of get like a better sense of what's going on right now. And if you're in the trade, you, you can have a general idea about if you're going to play reversal. Well, if you're looking long right now, you may make about like two points on it in terms of like if you're capturing the real move. If it doesn't, like if if it didn't have like an extended ADR move, then and it's not up two points, then chances are it might not be the reversal. So if you bought this right here and you see maybe you only made like a dollar, that comes back down your entry point. Well, in this case, this, this may just be an idea of saying, hey, like maybe the reversal hasn't happened yet or whatever it is, just, just be a little bit cautious. Uh, these are just a few scenarios that you can practice in terms of, of your, making your trades and understanding what range the market's trading. And, you could also, and then also you, you could use volume like this. Uh, but I, I like to use a volume profile or you could say point of control. I just don't have it on this chart because the main tool I want to emphasize is just range projections. Now let's study the five minute bar volatility. In this example, I'm tracking the last 20 minutes. So the last four or five minute bars. So as soon as I enter a trade, this is just telling me over the last 20 minutes, the volatility has been about 50 cents per share. So as soon as I enter, I can expect the market to move up or down 50, 50 cents within about 20, like over the last like uh, five, uh, over the last four, five minute bars, the last 20 minutes. So this is giving me an idea, hey, maybe you want to size in for, you know, be, be prepared to, to just have a 50, a 50 cent loss right out, right as soon as you enter. So if I'm gonna trade a thousand shares, maybe I might want to bump it down to 500 shares and expect to take like a $250 loss, whatever it is, and just size down a little bit, let the, let the volatility just tell me what to do. And the back of my mind, I'm just, it's putting me at ease. This is, this is allowing me to be more prepared for what the market is capable of doing right now. So knowing that, that gives me an idea of how much I can risk. And also pay attention to here. You can see like these big spikes, these big spikes. So one, these are just the one five minute candle. Knowing this, I can also be aware of like, hey, you know, the, if the market moves, like the market has moved $1.60 in five minutes before. Did it one, two, three, nearly three times, three or four times, or at least $1.40 it moved at least three times. Yeah, so that's three times this this 50 cent move. So I know if, if I see a rejection forming and it's, it's the real move, then I, maybe this might move in my favor like this, or it may move in my favor like this. Or you know, if I'm really at a level, I might want to keep a tight stop because I know that this might happen next. At least I'm preparing for that. So this, this volatility assessment just gives me an idea of what the market's capable of. So before I enter the trade, I can expect the volatility to be at least 50 cents. That's about eight to 10% of the average daily range the last 20 days. The largest five minute bars have been $1.61 and $1.40, about 30% of an average daily range the last 20 days. This gives me an idea of the worst case scenario if I enter this trade and get blown out right out of the water, it puts me at ease. So if I had 500 shares, then I know my worst case scenario is more than likely gonna be 750 bucks. And just, that's eliminating fear. So psychologically, now I can enter this trade with less fear because I'm a, I have an idea of what my enemy is capable of. And knowing myself, if I know that hitting full size and getting blown out might put me on tilt psychologically, well, I know my enemy is volatile today. I know myself well. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to adapt my trading style to what is in front of me, and it's going to be in line with myself and what the enemy is capable of. So in this case, I'll look to possibly risk 10% of the highest ADR scenario, perhaps like it's a little bit higher, about 60, uh, since the ADR was $6 a share, um, maybe like $6, I might risk like 65 cents on this, 65 cents per share. And the way I look to uh, trade is, I look I like to look for at least a three to one scenario. So that way I can be right 25% of the time and be break even and everything above a 25% win rate and three to one R ratio equals profit. So coming into this trade idea, my goal is to find supply and demand zones that are capable of offering, oh, in this case, 65 cents per share, not 53 cents, and uh, looking for something that pays out at least 1.6 or 1.8 per share. So risk 0.65 cents, the highest ADR. Reward at least, let's call it 40%, $1.60 of the highest ADR, three to one, 
and that that would be the trade. So just look for key reversal, key, look for key rejection levels, previous support resistance flips. Where can I where can I get that type of risk to reward? And those those will be zones that I'd be looking to put on some risk. You know, like over here, market's moving sideways. See it come down. You know, maybe I might put on that 65 cent risk here. Scale in as it moves below the five minute 20 EMA, and look for look to add on more on pops below VWAP if I'm looking for a big picture fade. Here, if I miss this rejection, then maybe I might enter a, at 430, uh, 434.70. Risk a risk like a close above VWAP, 65 cents. That'd be a strong push, uh, and scale as it as scales it breaks below the five minute 20 EMA. On pops here, we can risk above VWAP, scale as it breaks below the five minute 20 EMA, and just always have that 0 0.65 cents to 0 0.57 cents in mind. Whatever that four minute or whatever that 20 minute bar volatility is, and just keep in mind this is com this is just completely subjective. You can use this idea however you want this is something that i like to use many traders do something different so this is completely custom to whatever you want to do it's just an idea uh, for improvement okay so the way i do things may be very different from the way you do things but in terms of eliminating fear this is something that can help you eliminate it it's a tool that can help you do it levels above supply zones where market participants may have an interest in selling we have the weekly 480 all-time high, 459 July year-to-day high. This trade is a little outdated. Uh, this is from, I think it's like you know, when I did this. I did this in September, this analysis. You really just want to get an idea of like where the market is capable of. And <laughs> I actually um, I, I was calling this volume cluster slash breakout area where you can actually see market rejects here. We are here. I had this, see, I had this planned out. like a few weeks ago and the market came down into that 420. This was actually where the market reversed down here, right into this zone, right where this volume cluster happened. And uh, it reversed. Untested gap, market, market comes up into here. Usually this gap is in continuation gap to the direction of the gap. We're here at 445. You can see the volume cluster down here at 420. Levels below demand zones where market participants may have an interest in buying. Weekly 436, 433 VPOC since January 22, 22 high. We are above. Buyers are in control. We recently retested this VPOC August 18th. Buyers became aggressive and defended their positions. Daily 442 was last week's low, forming a higher low in the chart. Previous day's high was 447.13. Previous day's low was 444.50. Key inflection points prices where market participants may become more aggressive. Above 449, buyers may become more aggressive. Between four, between 448.50 and 449.20, they may be aggressive at the untested gap. All of this, this is just stuff where, like, just this is things that I was writing out at the time, just really becoming aware of my levels and understanding this as a trader. This is what eliminates fear because I'm prepared. Like, I'm ready to go. Like, this is like, I want to know what my levels are. Like, I, I what level is going to influence market participants to become more aggressive? Or what's going to make them reject prices? Where, like, where are they moving sideways? Aggressive, rejection, and sideways. And what catalysts can cause change and influence market participants to become more aggressive or passive? Well, at the time I did this, September 19th to through the 20th, the Fed uh, Federal Reserve meeting. See that? That was uh, this was before this happened. That was the event that was leading it up. And obviously, you know, this price action that we saw up here that. The Federal Reserve uh, is bearish and it pushes down to that. You can't see it on these charts, but it did push us down to 420. So you really want to be aware of what can cause change and influence market participants to become more aggressive or passive. And you want to be prepared. So, so you're not surprised when if you're if you're looking to buy a dip over here, preparing this level, you're not surprised when the market comes down like this. Okay, so this is a, so buying it here. You know it's not a long. You know that there's a big air pocket that you can be just joining the trend short on. If you're trend following that, and then just A B C scenarios for market opens. Uh, what scenarios that market participants may be thinking, like trend continuation, trend reversal, supply and demand holding. Scenario A: If we gap higher into the previous day's close, 
it was 445.50. The nearest supply zone would be 448.50 to 449.20. Testing these levels right off the open would equal a $3 to $3.70 move from the previous day's close. That's a full 5 to 10 day ADR gap. If this happens, then look to enter short as close to 40.40 as possible. So at the time of this, at the time of this analysis, the ADR was a lot lower on this trade. It wasn't as high as it is right now. So um, just walking through these scenarios, this was this was a little bit different context in terms of the high, higher volatility that I was talking about. So if this happens, look at your short as close to 448.50 to 449.00, risking 53 cents, three to one risk reward would be in line with the previous day's high of 447. Let's say that I may be fearful if I short that at 448.60, the market will move against me. My knowledge of the ADR suggests the market is unlikely to move more than 4.25 points on the day, 448.86 is a three point one move from the previous day's close. If the market does move against me, I have an appropriate stop of 53 cents based on past behavior. If we gap lower, the previous day's low was 444.50. The demand zone would be 442.75. A move into 442.75 would be $2.75 from the previous day's close. This would be in line with yesterday's ADR. If this happens, it look to enter long as close to 442.75 as possible, risking 53 cents. A three to one risk reward would be 444.5. So see how I'm just like mapping out, like, hey, if I'm entering here, then the, a potential reward would be here. I'm just trying to line up my, like the, the ADR, like the volatility with the key level. Or perhaps if I'm fearful, or perhaps I'm fearful that if I long at 442.75, the market may move against me to 442.25 stop just and stop me out that's okay we have an appropriate risk to reward at a key level based on past behavior we can place a trade off of remember michael jordan missed more than 9,000 shots in his career and failed to hit the game winner 26 times he's still one of the best basketball players ever to play in the nba or scenario c if we open in the middle of the range or non above the above scenarios wait and do nothing save risk until premium supplier demand level offers a good risk to reward trade Basically, I'm saying wait for an outside level, wait for a good trade. In this case, I'm looking to trade outside levels. I don't want to trade inside levels. And uh, what we can see here, the market comes into this untested gap, tests it, and this is on the 30-minute chart. Market comes up into here, tests this, market sells off. You can see this is at 440, 448.50 level. It comes into this gap here, rejects it. Market participants sold off, comes into the previous day's high where this previous resistance buyers found value here and they were defending it. So they they held this level for now on this trade. And uh, this is just the, this is just some things to pay attention to. The discipline is to wait for the right entry, combined with the knowledge of past volatility and price behavior. This will set you apart from majority of the traders. Most are unlikely to have done the same level of preparation. Through your preparation, you are working through the issues your fear mind can throw at you. What if I lose? Well, if it is a loser, the answer is that the market moves beyond your stop point, then your position is probably wrong and your stop loss will handle your exit. And this will be the last topic that we cover in this video. Another way to handle the fear of losing is to build losses into your system. What's your max account drawdown? Let's say on a 250K account, your max drawdown is 3%. 250 thousand dollars times three percent equals seventy five hundred dollar max account loss before hitting pause the way that you break this down is you want to identify what your maximum consecutive loss is so let's say it's six losses in a row add an extra loss for a margin of error let's say that your max losses in a row is seven well now let's take our max account loss of seven thousand five hundred divide by seven losses in a row this gives us a risk of one thousand seventy two per trade if we maintain a three to one rr then every three losses in a row one winner, one winner will make back our losses and position us as break even. That means we can be right 25% of the time and not lose money. Psychologically, it can feel uncomfortable playing these odds, but by doing the math for both for both the volatility and our account, it can help us visualize success in segments like Roger Bannister. And failure and losses are to be expected. We must build failure into our system. Center drawdown within your highest consecutive loss category, excessive drawdown higher than your consecutive loss streak or you're experiencing losses more frequently than usual. So excessive drawdown, or so standard drawdown, you can see uptrending equity curve, standard drawdown moves down. Okay, well if you hit this, just size down, use half size or one fourth the size, position size until your edge reappears. 
uh, if, as you find more edge and, you start, and the market starts rewarding you, you can use this, your standard R position size as your edge reappears again. You could continue to scale up the account, strategically scale up your R position size as, as edge is working and your account is continually hitting account highs. So we covered this more in depth, I believe, in the budget and account management video and also probably in the risk management video. But uh, yeah, this is this is just a scenario like the exercise that I did. I know I, I talked a little bit faster through this part. The reason for that is that the main important part I wanted to just really emphasize is the volatility assessment, becoming aware of that, and then just writing out plans like this. Just write out your levels above, below, key inflection points, catalysts, and then write out three scenarios. Yeah, you really just want to prepare and just walk yourself through this mental preparation before you enter the game. This is the practice before the market opens. And in doing so, if you're committed to this craft, then everything that we talked about inside of these KPIs, this will be something that you can overcome. And you could grow past it and evolve into the trader you want to become and that you deserve to be. All right, that marks this video. In the next video, we will talk about trust, patience, and discipline.